All right, guys. It is a cold, dreary winter day in May up here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York on this gloomy Wednesday, May 5th. 2021 so uh, you guys are so lucky you get two chronicles of the collapse today we just started off with some good news about the US birth rate falling to the lowest rate in over a century you can find that good news uh, chronicle elsewhere but what we're gonna do now I don't know if this is good news or bad news this is we're going to peek into a crystal ball and I want to thank uh, my lieutenant Tom, brother Tom, who, uh, for sending me this story. Tom has a great eye for stories about the collapse and uh, <clears throat> I'm not real sure why the uh, author of this report, probably just so more people will read this essay, I get old Deepak Chopra. Good old Deepak Chopra. I haven't checked in with Deepak, and this was co-written by, uh, probably ghost-written by some other people, but they're giving Deepak <coughs> the byline <coughs> with this story right here from Yahoo Life. To survive our technical transformation, civilization needs a cognitive revolution. Good luck on that. So guys, this is a long involved story. Not sure I'm going to get to the end of it. I'm going to read about 15 minutes of it and I'm going to put the link on here and suggest you read this yourself. So what does Deepak and the gang uh, see shaping up in the next couple of decades <clears throat> over the next decade? All right, take it away, Deepak. Over the next decade, industrial civilization will experience a scale of technological disruption never before seen in the history of humanity. Converging across the five foundational sectors of information, which is what we're doing now, energy, transportation, food and materials, this disruption will drive massive transformations across the economy. But while this disruption is inevitable due to fundamental economic drivers, only by transforming our very core way of seeing and understanding the world will we navigate this transition in a way that elevates humanity to new heights while avoiding societal breakdown. It is all uh, in the next decade. Uh, the big question is, will we navigate this transition to elevate humanity over the next uh, 10 years or will we uh, navigate it into societal breakdown? I think you know my uh, prediction on that question, but I expect Deepak is probably a little more uh, apocalyptic uh, than I am, getting back to his essay. <clears throat> Over the last two decades, we have been constantly more accurate uh, than mainstream analysts in predicting critical technological disruptions like rapid cost declines for solar panels, the shrinking of the coal industry, as well as the peaking of global oil demand for petrol car sales. Uh, uh, again, uh, Deepak and his little economic think tank uh, are claiming that the coal industry is shrinking and that global oil demand and the sale of gas-sucking cars has already peaked. Again, I'm not saying I agree with every word 
uh, that I read on this channel. <clears throat> okay, what do you anticipate Deepak and the rest of the guys? <clears throat> we anticipate that technological innovations across these five sectors will drop production costs by 10 times or more. Yeah, like, uh, like the price of lumber. Yeah, yeah, Deepak, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. Uh, putting incumbent legacy industries from fossil fuels to dairy farming out of business. Hmm. Fossil fuel companies and dairy farming will no longer exist on this planet in 10 years, according to Deepak uh, and the guys potentially allowing humanity to revolutionize the way we process and communicate information and produce our energy, food, and materials. And then they break all of this down, uh, starting with the disruption of extraction. Human civilizations have traditionally organized around an extraction-based production system based on hierarchical, centralized control and distribution of scarce resources. This system has come with a set of beliefs about the world, scientific practices, and ideas about society, an organizing system in which exploitation and inequality became hardwired as systemic features necessary to keep the system alive, and that is exactly uh, what, what has happened. Uh, exploitation and inequality are hardwired into a global in industrial capitalism or whateverism. And uh, we're either going to change the hardwiring in about 10 years or Mad Max is on its way. <clears throat> While contributing to important discoveries in unprecedented forms of progress, yes, this system is reaching its limits in the form of escalating global crises from climate change to pandemics, from rising inequality to resurgent authoritarianism, from financial instability to raging xenophobia. Yes, but, but those industries that have thrived in this extraction-based system are not going to survive the next decade because they will be swept away by fundamental economics. Again, guys, uh, simply because I read an essay on Collapse Chronicles, do not worry uh, that Sam Mitchell uh, has taken some sort of blue pill. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm, you know, back in the 1950s reading some popular mechanics uh, idea of what technology is going to look like in the year 2000. So all of this is going to happen in the next 10 years, according to Deepak and his friends, those industries that have thrived in this extraction-based system are not going to survive the next decade. All right. And as he says now, life comes at you fast. Yes. Centuries ago, 
uh, the cross-pollination of technologies in different sectors led to the innovation of the printing press, which made books widely available and affordable. This unlocked the mass circulation of knowledge and ideas, making way for the Enlightenment and scientific revolution. And then a century ago, the internal combustion engine along with the first moving assembly line led cars to completely replace horse transportation. At the time, nobody thought that was possible. Yes, then automobiles went on to transform entire industries and entire built environments with houses, towns, and cities redesigned around cars. Uh, then don't forget the arrival of the smartphone, the cloud and AI. Uh, blah, I, I, guys, I'm just paraphrasing as I go along. You need to go and read this. Uh, don't forget digital cameras, microwave ovens. All of these disruptions can take little more than a decade to render their predecessors obsolete. So, hell, if we can come up with microwave ovens, we can uh, disrupt uh, 10,000 years of extraction-based uh, industries. You, you go, Deepak. So why is this? This is because technology disruptions follow an S-curve, starting slowly, rapidly accelerating as production costs plummet while capabilities increase before reaching an exponential growth rate that wipes out and replaces those older technologies. And so we have an opportunity, guys. Uh, humanity has an opportunity Yes, it is the convergent, the convergence between different sectors that produce the most profound transformations trapped in silo thinking. I love that term, silo thinking. Conventional analysts, and probably doomers, fail to grasp how synergies across the sectors of transportation, energy, information, food, and materials will rewrite the very rules of civilization itself. These disruptions, I mean, coming in the next 10 years, according to Deepak, these disruptions are not merely technological substitutions an electric car for a gasoline car, for instance, but a fundamental change to the systems. Yes, uh, which all of this will bring in a new set of possibilities across society. Yes. Uh, Okay, in much the same way that the internet permanently transformed dozens of other industry sectors, solar, wind, and battery storage will make clean energy so cheap and abundant that it will unlock radical innovations we can barely imagine today scaled up to 100% of supply, energy superabundance will be available at near zero marginal cost. The energy system will shift from domination by centralized utilities to inherent decentralization, enabling the emergence of self-sufficient communities, companies, and regions while creating new jobs, products, business models, and organized capabilities. Obviously, uh, Deepak Chopra has never read Bright Green Lies 
by Derek Jensen and, uh, and the Deep Green Resistance guys. Uh, is this or is this not the biggest bright green lie? And then, of course, obviously Deepak Chopra is not a fan of Andy the Gardener uh, pointing out that the single worst thing that humanity can do to this planet is replace inefficient fossil fuels with limitless quote, free energy. You turn eight billion uh, of these apes loose, give eight billion of us <clears throat> a, a limitless supply of, uh, uh, of free energy, and you will watch the destruction of this planet go into overdrive. Uh, it will make the, uh, the destruction of fossil fuels to this planet seem like a bad hair day in comparison. And we have Deepak Chopra and all these guys cheering on this big green lie. Anyway, guys, I have a lot on my plate. Uh, I am going to let this go down to the very bottom of this essay. I've heard about enough of the techno-optimistic hopium to free the body, free your mind. Okay, the bottom line. We can only guess at the mosaic of sciences, belief systems, governance mechanism, value codes, and don't forget spiritual practices that will emerge in the next 10 years to support and enrich humanity in this new age of freedom. All right. It is a new age of freedom uh, we're embarking upon. But we can be sure that you can only guess on that, the last line, but we can be sure that for the first time in history, we, we humans, can see well within our grasp an imminent future full of unlimited possibilities. It is up to us to make it ours. Yes. And I guess the real authors of this uh, descent into hopium uh, and Yahoo lifestyle are James R. Bibb. He is chairman of a UK-based family investment office with a diversified portfolio across all asset, asset classes. All right, so this man uh, who's going to open up the Age of Freedom uh, has given keynote speeches to at dozens of events, including for BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, governments, and corporations. Yes, I, I, I know I'm going to, I, I'm going to let that man lead me into a, 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 into a new age of freedom. And who is Tony Siba? He is the uh, other real author of this. Tony Siba is a world-renowned thought leader, author, speaker, educator, an angel investor. This man invests in angels and of course he is a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. Yes, he too has been a keynote speaker at hundreds of global events and organizations including Google, Davos, COP21, JP Morgan, 
the global leaders forum and of course intersolar and china ev 100 yes uh, i have no idea what deepak chopra is doing running around with these guys uh anyway uh <laughs> i think you know my opinion on uh, the new age of freedom washing into this country and this planet and the what does Deb Ozarko call the 2020s the decade of is it the decade of unraveling anyway I can't remember Deb anyway guys I've got to uh, wrap up this nonsense and uh get out there and uh, buy a, uh, I'm shopping for one of these, these like brush, like a, uh, I, I guess you would call it a weed whacker on, on steroids. It's a, uh, you take a weed whacker and you put a nine inch chop saw blade on the end of it. Uh, so I need to get out there and go buy a, uh, a, a, a weed whacker on steroids before the Amazon jungle takes over uh, bugs in a jar farm if it ever gets above 60 degrees again. Anyway, get out there and whack your weeds while you still can and do enjoy the new age of freedom coming up between now and 2030. Bye, guys.